Bears. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. On March 21st, 2024, Premier Andrew Fury and the governing Newfoundland and Labrador Liberal Party tabled Newfoundland and Labrador's 2024-2025 provincial budget. Now, according to the province, quote, as a government, we are transforming the province's finances as we work towards a stronger, smarter, self-sufficient, sustainable province, end quote. The Deputy Premier and Minister of Finance, who tabled the budget, said that this budget will, quote, help residents and businesses with affordability measures, end quote. The minister went on to say that this budget is making record investments in healthcare, seniors, housing, poverty reduction, and infrastructure. Now, we caught up with Amy Cody, the president of Municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador, for her reactions on the provincial budget. President Cody's perspective promises to shed light on the implications of this provincial budget on municipalities across the province. This is Municipal Affairs. President, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. I want to start by getting your first initial reactions to the provincial budget that was tabled earlier this week. Uh, uh, Newfoundland Labrador's uh, Deputy Premier and Minister of Finance tabled the budget. Uh, what was the reaction from municipalities' perspective? Uh, from our standpoint and municipalities, Newfoundland Labrador standpoint, we advocated for training for municipal councillors. We advocated for funding for uh, Newfoundland and Labrador Association of Fire Services for municipal um, fire protection services um, and some, uh, you know, infrastructure asks and revisions to some asks. And we got what we asked for. So we're extremely happy that our uh, advocacy worked and that the provincial government is listening to the needs of municipalities. Um, we have uh, just a few days after this announcement from the when the table was budget, but in some of the advocacy work that you've been doing and you've been advocating for, uh, particularly around municipal fire services, uh, I, I've spoken to some of your municipal colleagues from across the province. This is something that I've heard when I've uh, uh, chatted with them why was this an important uh, request from the municipalities to the province to add additional dollars to the municipal fire services to respond to incidents outside of uh, uh, municipal boundaries? Is this happening more often than not? It is, and that's why we asked for that. The responses for our municipal fire departments now take them outside of our municipal boundaries uh, many, many times. It's not just the traditional call within the municipality of a house fire or chimney fire or, you know, the different things that would happen within your community. They are now responding to climate change emergencies, uh, environmental disasters, hazardous waste spills, forest fires, motor vehicle accidents, all happening outside of municipal boundaries. And while, you know, they want to be responding to those calls, we need to make sure that the funding is there to support them when they respond to those calls. So the, they need to have access to the appropriate equipment to respond to those calls, have the appropriate training to respond to those calls. Um, we're dealing with volunteers for the most part. You know, we have to be able to compensate them for their time in some respects, because a lot of them leave their jobs to respond to those calls because they're acting on a volunteer basis. So we try to compensate our firefighters where and if we can. Um, so all of that responsibility falls back on the municipality to provide those funds. There are grants, equipment grants and vehicle grants and things available from the provincial government. However, the majority of those costs do fall back on the municipality. So it was very important for us to make sure that the province recognized that, recognize that the call for service has increased and that they need to be compensated appropriately for their time and for their talents. Now, if if I'm not mistaken, the increase is approximately about four hundred thousand uh, dollars, and I, I can imagine you have sat around a uh, budget table of long enough that that four hundred thousand dollar increase is probably one mm -hmm. fire truck at the end of the day. What's the municipalities looking for when it comes to this increase? Is there a specific earmark that it wants to go towards when it responds? Is it those grants that you're talking about att 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 attaining and attracting potentially new volunteer firefighters to help? out respond to some of these increased calls that you're seeing 
Well, right now, uh, the province has uh, programs in place where they will sponsor costs of fire trucks. So that's a different program. This money most likely would not go towards the big purchases like that. But, um, you know, hazardous waste, uh, protective clothing, you know, things like that, that would come with uh, having to respond to those types of help, wear and tear on our equipment for the additional use. Um, currently, the government would compensate firefighters $350 for a call outside of the municipal boundary. Um, we've asked for that to be increased to $350 an hour with a max of $1,500 per call outside of the municipality. So some of that money will go towards that. Um, we've also asked for $60,000, which will go towards um, outreach so that we can do the proper research to find out what the actual cost is to the municipality when responding to these types of calls. So some of that money will be for research and outreach purposes, um, but the majority of that money will go towards compensating them for, for the actual call time and response time. One of the other things that I've been hearing from your members when I sit down to speak to them on the cross-border interviews is infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. It is something that they have been just talking about at ends, whether it be Deer Lake, whether it be Bonavista, whether it be Gander. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure seems to be a key priority for a lot of municipal leaders right now. In your opinion, as president of MNL, I just want to make sure I get that acronym right, because I've been dealing with mm -hmm. a lot of acronyms this week. In your opinion, as president of the organization, did this budget deliver on helping municipalities address potential infrastructure deficits in communities across the province? Well, in the budget, it was stated there will be $50 million over five years that will go towards water and wastewater upgrades. So, you know, while that is like, and no pun intended, a drop in the bucket um, of what is needed to fix our municipal infrastructure and to address some of the issues, it is certainly a help. Um, so again, our advocacy around infrastructure upgrades is being heard. We need that money, that dollar amount to be a lot higher. But again, to see that the province is recognizing the need um, and, and working with us to address the need, that $50 million will be gobbled up pretty quickly. But again, it is a start and it's absolutely necessary that we do start. You say it was a good start, and it's a question I was going to ask a little bit later, but I'm going to, I can ask it right now. What would have been a good, better start? And I always say better because municipalities are dealing with a lot of issues right now, and we're going to be talking about healthcare, which is another priority for municipalities, especially around mental health and addictions. Is there a number that you were looking for, or were you just hoping that they would come to the table and address some of these issues uh, in that first step like you've talked about? Mm -hmm. That number is so large that, you know, it would be difficult to even say, I think about Mr. Evil or Dr. Evil, you know, $1 billion, you know, but uh, I mean, it's, you know, it, you think about that number and you think that's a massive, massive number. But when we look at the infrastructure needs across the province, you know, that number is extremely high. Um, and as we continue to do our asset management plans and learn more about our deficiencies and our need to upgrade um, and the amount of work and the rising cost of everything to do that work, 50 million is a start. And that's that's what I can say, it's, it's a start. Understandable. Budget 2024-2025 allocates $1.3 million for mobile primary care clinics to travel to communities it, it, with limited access to primary care, particularly those rural communities in your province. In What will this mean for rural communities throughout the province of Newfoundland and Labrador? So the $1.3 million for, for outreach, um, again, Municipalities are dealing with things that we've never had to deal with before, and healthcare in our communities is one of those things, especially in rural Newfoundland and Labrador. So that 1.3 million, we hope, will be able to, um, you know, help uh, individuals in our rural areas to access some of that healthcare, um, to you know, recruit and retain some of their healthcare professionals. Um, mental health, um, you know, is is a big uh, factor 
in healthcare these days. Um, we're hoping that, you know, that will help in some of those areas as well, that they'll be able to access information, access care. So again, 1.3 million, while it's not going to solve the issue, it is certainly a start and will make things more accessible to individuals who need it. Municipalities have been dealing with a lot more social issues than in previous years. And I say social issues, you talked about mental health and addictions, and that's what I traditionally mean by that. Um, this budget does add more money to help individuals seeking help for mental health and addictions. Do you believe this could offset some of the challenges that more, uh, more municipalities are dealing with when it comes to uh, providing services around potentially mental health and addiction uh, internally? And now that the province is adding more money to to the pot, it will sort of help alleviate some of those issues. So municipalities can focus on issues that are, I don't want to say of importance, but things that are traditionally in their jurisdiction rather than mental health mm -hmm. and addictions. Again, it will certainly help. Um, you know, will it solve the problem? No. But again, it's a start. And just knowing that the province is listening when we're talking about the issues that are affecting our municipalities, whether it's infrastructure or healthcare needs or whatever it is, um, you know, the ability to access our facilities even to, you know, when we know that when people have access to facilities, you know, they can exercise, they have access to walking trails, you know, connect with nature, be more mindful, um, connect with their surroundings. That all helps in the grand scheme of things when it comes to our own individual health and healthcare needs. So again, you know, it's it's a start and it will help. You, you keep on saying this is a good first step. It's a good start. But And you were quoted after the budget was released by saying this budget is a step towards municipal fiscal s stability. Um, where do you believe that the government could have gone further to address municipal concerns in this budget? Um infrastructure is is massive um when we talk about a homelessness um we talk about affordable housing the i mean we we've, we've just uh completed uh, a research paper with choices for youth on um, housing and homelessness and the needs within our communities um and the infrastructure that's necessary to create additional housing units the research showed that just to create one additional um, housing unit, the cost to bring that infrastructure to that housing unit is $107,000. So when you put that on top of what we're already dealing with in maintaining our existing infrastructure, um, trying to expand to make sure that we have places for people in our communities to live because we need our communities to grow so we can generate additional revenue through property taxes, through business tax or services provided in our communities. The more houses that we can create, the more um, you know, multiple housing units, duplexes, quadplexes, apartment buildings, affordable housing units. If it's $100,000 to do one, we need to maximize that. We can't do one at a time. We need to, you know, we need to be doing multiple at a time to make sure we're getting the best bang for our buck. So infrastructure money is huge. 50 million over five years, wonderful. But I mean, we could have used 250 million and still, you know, find ourselves in deficit. Um, but you know, it, it's a fact that we need to address within our own communities um, and the province also needs to work with us to make sure that we get where we need to get. It's going to take a long time and the longer it takes, our, our existing infrastructure is still aging. So, you know, there's not going to be a quick fix. Uh, it's a long game, um, but we need to have continual amounts of money to flow uh, to help us address those issues. I'm going to ask a very political question, but I've asked it to every single of your uh, sister organizations, whether it be the Union of New Brunswick, uh, Union of Municipalities, New Brunswick, Alberta Municipalities, SUMA. Are municipalities better off today than they were prior to this budget being tabled? Um, I would say yes, because we're being listened to. Um, I know here in Newfoundland and Labrador, our, our advocacy efforts, what we asked for, the province responded to. 
um, and responded positively to. So we need to make sure that we maintain our seat at the table to make sure that we're constantly feeding them the information and talking about our needs and our challenges so that when they are making decisions on where the money is going, that they're constantly thinking about municipalities. So from, a, from an attention standpoint, I think we're in a really good place in that we have their attention, they're listening to our needs and they're responding to our needs. Um, you know, as time goes on, it'll, you know, it'll be determined, I guess, later down the road if we're in a better place then. Uh, but as of today, I think we're, we're making progress and uh, we understand our needs more as well now. So, you know, that's a big thing as well when it comes to asset management. I mean, a lot of our municipalities weren't doing asset management. So we really had no idea of how good or how bad we actually were. So now that we're actually tracking and monitoring that, we know, okay, we're doing really good here. This is where we need to spend some attention uh, and spend some money and do some work. Um, and we have a long-term plan now as well to help us manage um, and plan better moving into the future. What about locally for yourself? I want to you take off your president hat for a second, put on your counselor's hat for a second of uh, Grand Falls, Windsor. Uh, was there anything in this budget that you look at as a counselor for your community and say, you know what, uh, Grand Falls, Windsor, there is a little bit better now because of this uh, budget? Yeah, well, the um, the waste, the water and wastewater money, we're hoping that we'll be able to access some of that money money because there's there's work that we need to do in our water treatment facility. We have a regional water treatment facility, so we service several other communities as well as Grand Falls, Windsor. So this will you know help us do some of the upgrades that we need to do if we can access that money. Um, when it comes to the the municipal fire services, um, you know we're we're the largest community in central Newfoundland so we service you know we're considered the hub so we work outside of our municipality quite a bit because we're the larger fire department um, and we have you know a lot of the equipment that's necessary to respond to some of these calls and our firefighters are trained to respond to a lot of those calls as well so the money for fire and emergency services will certainly come in handy in helping us um, assist other fire departments in our region as well when we're responding to those calls. Put your president hat back on again here for a second. Um, M &L I don't know was if they ever really like interchange or come off. <laughs> they never do, do they? Um, yeah. MNL was hoping for a commitment to overhaul legislation, including but not limited to the Cities Act. Why is this reform of this legislation such an important step for uh, MNL? And do you think that it can get done before the next provincial election? Well, the uh, Municipalities Act was from 1991, uh, totally outdated, um, <laughs> very restrictive. So we do have a commitment that that passed uh, its third reading in the um, spring, fall, winter sitting of the House. Um, we're expecting that to go through fall 2024, early uh 2025. Um, so, and that's completely new legislation. Um, it's going to be called the Towns and Local Service Districts Act. Um, it has a lot of enabling legislation in there, it gives the municipalities um, different ways to uh, create and manage funding. Um, so that's important. There's a lot of work we need to do in deciphering that act and figuring out you know, what can work to our advantages. There's going to be a learning curve to that. But that new legislation, <laughs> excuse me, is something that we have been asking for. Um, so we're happy that that is, is finally going to happen. Um, they promised a revision of the um, Cities Act, the City of St. John's Act, um, and the Urban, Rural, and Planning Act. They are all coming under review now as well, which need some definite res uh, definite revisions in those act. And we've also, when we talk about revenue, the um, Utilities Tax Act for uh, cable and television companies. Um, so that act came into effect in 1993. 
that act allows municipalities to charge service providers in their community uh, 2.5% of their gross revenue from the previous year. The problem with that act is that it says that revenue comes from telegraph, television, and facsimile. <laughs> Totally so, something that we have in 2024, that, right? That, that revenue is getting less and less and less and less every year. Um, so we need that act to be revised to, uh, you know, to state the today's reality, you know, internet, Wi-Fi, data, streaming services. And that can equate to a lot of money for municipalities, which will in turn give us the ability to manage things a little better on our own, create our own revenue and be able to spend within our communities without being so reliant on the provincial and federal government. We're still going to be heavily reliant on provincial and federal government, but at least that act would allow us to generate some, some more revenue that, you know, we're, we're entitled to, but we can't do that without the revision of the act. Before I let you go, I have one last question for you. And I think it's the important future question, which we always do on the show is what's next now, now that this budget has been tabled, you said you, you feel like you've been listened to. I'm assuming the advocacy work does not stop because they you've been listened to. Now the next set of questions and the next set of asks will be coming down the pipeline. But as the organization, what are you hoping to be looking to at to, for the future? Well, we're going to continue, like you said, the advocacy, we're going to say thank you. Um, but this is what we need now. <laughs> so we'll we'll work with our members now in, in rolling this out to see how it benefits our municipalities and our membership. Um, we'll, we'll monitor how the 50 million in infrastructure money um, gets spread out over the five years and what municipalities and communities are able to avail of that funding and what they're doing with that funding. Um, we'll start the research with our... Um, Newfoundland and Labrador Association of Forest Services on, you know, what the the four hundred thousand dollars is is meaning to them, um, and you know where where the deficiencies are, where we can improve uh, services based on that funding, um, and again, just continue to work. Our, our members really set set what we do. So when we go into our conference now in November, there will be a set of resolutions put forward by our member municipalities and that's what we'll base our advocacy work on so this year nine of our 11 resolutions um, were financial uh, needs so you know we feel that in our advocacy efforts you know we nailed that and and the province responded positively um, so again we'll continue to work you know it's it's a positive working relationship we're going to do our best to maintain that, uh, maintain our seat at the table and work with all parties involved to make sure that the communities that fall under municipalities, Newfoundland and Labrador are listened to and that their needs are responded to. I will say that I'm looking, I'm hoping if my travel plans do not change like they did last year, because I was expected to be at the Newfoundland and Labrador uh, Municipalities Newfoundland and Labrador Conference, but I ended up in yeah. St. John, New Brunswick instead of St. John's Newfoundland because I do not know how to book a plane ticket. So therefore <laughs> I landed in the wrong province at the wrong time. So with that being said, I am excited to come to Newfoundland and Labrador and hopefully be at their conference this year and see and talk to some of your municipal leaders. Amy, President Cody, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it as always. Thank you, Chris. You're doing a great job. I love watching your interviews and I can't wait to host you in uh, Newfoundland and Labrador. So we look forward to seeing you soon. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from the issues on municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders from across Canada on the cross-border interviews and even our eye-opening exploration of the decisions local governments make in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed as well as engaged. Your support, though, is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, amplifies the depth and the breadth of our programming. 
Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed, stay engaged, and most importantly, and as always, just keep talking.